On January the 19th, 2023, the US debt ceiling was reached, disabling the US government from borrowing new money and issuing new bonds. On May the 15th, after four months of paying bills by using cash and extraordinary measures, Janet Yellen urges Congress to act, stating there is a significant risk that the federal government will no longer be able to pay all its obligations in the first two weeks of June if debt limit remains unchanged. In a letter to Kevin McCarthy, she further states, I am writing to note that we still estimate that Treasury will no longer be able to satisfy all the government's obligations if Congress has not acted to raise or suspend the debt limit by early June and potentially as early as June the 1st. Without any understanding of American politics, this situation would appear hopeless, but a final agreement is passed through the House on the 31st of May and one day later through the Senate on the 1st of June. By the 3rd of June, with just two days to spare, President Joe Biden signs a deal to suspend the $31 trillion debt ceiling until January 2025, legislation that lifts the nation's debt ceiling and staves off a devastating US default but does little to slow a massive buildup of total federal debt now on pace to exceed 50 trillion in a decade. The US debt ceiling has been growing larger every year since it was first introduced in 1917, having been raised and extended or revised over 78 separate times since 1960. The debt limit is incredibly self-explanatory. It's the amount of debt the federal government is allowed to hold and it's essential to the operation of America's economy, which has run off debt unable to pay their bills without it since 2001 over 22 years ago. Essentially what this tells us is that the US government spends more every year than it makes in taxation and therefore has needed to borrow a total of $31 trillion in order to finance its operations. For individual households or even businesses to continually borrow more than they're making in revenues year after year just to pay back old debt obligations would be a surefire route to bankruptcy. But because the US government has a monopoly on violence and controls the source of every single US dollar in the world, things are a little bit different. The US government, as large, stable and powerful as it is, is still an organization bound to the laws of physics in which our economic system dictates. We are getting incredibly close to finding out what happens when it all falls apart though as we speak. The politicians in charge care only about winning the next election cycle and continuously kick the can down the road to deal with later. The issue continues to grow, the debt continues to inflate and enlarge, but there will come a time where it can grow no longer, where it reaches a point of no return and everything starts to fall. Eventually, decades of ignorance will catch up to the US economy and the dollar and the government will default properly for the first time ever in its history unless it does something even worse. There is only one real way out of this mess for the government, but it involves creating an even bigger mess for the American people, and unfortunately, this plan has already begun. Now, Ray Dalio has aligned himself with the Chinese Communist Party and is almost giddy as he watches America walk itself down a path it can no longer avoid. He's the founder of the biggest and most successful hedge fund in the world, Bridgewater Associates, and regardless of your views on his morality, he is a master of the markets. And if you want to protect yourself from the chaos that is to come, keep an eye out for this video video's partner Masterworks. Now going back through history and the US government has tended to run noticeably higher deficits during periods of major conflicts like Vietnam or the Second World War, but things started to change with the advent of the 21st century. Yes, Afghanistan and Iraq were large-scale wars by most countries' definitions, but for American history, they weren't that big at all. And let's not forget that the vast majority of America's involvement in Iraq after just eight years is ended and Afghanistan is even done with these days, and yet still the deficit continues to grow, with no checks or balances stopping the US government from printing as much money as they desire. Things of course got far worse with the financial crisis of 2008 and the subsequent American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2008. Nine, a stimulus package signed into effect by Obama, which injected $831 billion alone into the economy and contributed to a yearly deficit of $1.4 trillion. And if you think that was bad, Obama also put into place the Affordable Care Act in 2010, which extended the reach of Medicare and Medicaid, costing the American government over $7 trillion in 2022 alone, almost 23% of the entire government's budget. And of course, how can we forget the Pentagon's accounting error, which provided an extra $6 billion in military aid to Ukraine, a minor and honest mistake from the US government, which had already pledged 46 7 billion to them over the year prior. Perhaps that was money for bribes or maybe even a certain someone's laptop that needed to be hidden. Now Dalio is well known for something else entirely, 
the all-weather portfolio which diversifies beyond stocks and bonds to potentially weather any crisis. Even if you don't stick directly to that makeup, his success is one example of the power of diversification and utilizing other asset classes. In fact, some of my own subscribers may have recently seen a fantastic 17% net return just a few days ago because they diversified into a new asset class themselves. And actually, that's 17.6% net returns to be exact. In addition to other recent exits for 10, 13, and even 35% net returns, all thanks to our longtime partner Masterworks, who are helping you diversify into a growing market that's now past its pre-pandemic highs. They securitize multi-million dollar works of contemporary art, making them investable, and when a painting sells, you get any potential annualized net return. Masterworks' collection is constantly growing because the billionaires haven't yet bought it all up. The global value of art is expected to grow an incredible $1 trillion by 2026, according to Citibank, which means there's still time for everyday investors, and it's easy, you can use their website and app like I've been talking about forever. Now, each of Masterworks 14 exits so far have returned a profit to their investors, with several sales already this year. Paintings can even sell out in hours, not days, but right now, you can get priority access to skip the waitlist below. Now, as we all know, that $31 trillion debt ceiling was reached. All of these blunders have now added up. And as I previously mentioned, eventually the US will be forced to default. This is something that was first foreshadowed in 2011 in the aftermath of the global financial crisis when S&P downgraded the government's credit rating from AAA to AA+, precisely over concerns about their budget deficit and their rising burden. At the time, the debt ceiling was $14 trillion, less than half of the current $31 trillion debt ceiling, which has doubled over the last 12 years. The safe bet now to make today is that the US will continue in the years coming to accelerate this ceiling as it continues to climb higher, something which in turn will cause the value of US government bonds, a traditionally safe but low yield investment and drop, increasing yields and therefore the cost of borrowing for the government. Now that just makes the problem even worse and it will eventually spiral out of total control where the debt pile will get larger as it also sees interest rates increase. It really makes you wonder why Joe Biden's propaganda machine proudly exclaimed in a statement from the White House that he brought Democrats and Republicans together around a bipartisan agreement that protects our historic economic progress and reduces the deficits by nearly one trillion over the next decade. A figure which, if quickly fact-checked on the internet, can be proven to be false. This nearly one trillion dollar debt claim having been debunked by CNN and factcheck.org alike. But how is a US government default even possible when they can just increase the debt ceiling and print more money? Well, this is where Ray Dalio comes in because things are not as solid and safe as they may seem. Increasing the debt limit the way Congress and presidents have repeatedly done will mean there will be no meaningful limit on the debt, which will eventually lead to a disastrous financial collapse, because increasing debt assets and liabilities faster than income eventually makes it impossible to simultaneously pay a lender a high enough real interest rate to have them hold the debt assets without having that real interest rate too high for the borrower to be able to service their debts. Essentially, what Dalio is saying is that eventually, as this debt owed by the US grows larger and larger, eventually there will be no more demand to buy the new debt, therefore they will be unable to sell their issued bonds and will be forced to default on their debt, a scenario which is only relieved through two separate methods raising interest rates which will further crash the US government from a higher cost of borrowing or printing more money by the Federal Reserve who will then buy the debt bonds themselves in some weird Ponzi scheme. And Dalio isn't obviously happy with either possibility which is inflationary and encourages holders of the debt to sell the debt which makes the debt imbalance even worse. As Dalio puts it, in either case that creates a debt crisis that is like the runs on the banks that we've been seeing but with government bonds being what is sold and the run on the bank being a run on the central bank. Under the current policy of politicians, there is no escape and eventually it will cause the same effect as not increasing the debt limit a default will cause financial havoc and social upheaval. What kind of financial havoc and social upheaval? Well, for starters, if this were to happen, thousands of investors and financial institutions would lose most if not all of the value to their portfolios in which government bonds take up. A similar impact would be seen across the entire US equity markets and probably every other equity market around the world too, as treasuries are so ridiculously dominant in this market that almost every institution and major investor holds them. Government sectors like defense, healthcare, transportation and all social programs would likely cease to function or at a minimum be severely understaffed until the necessary support could be 
attained and that's if it can be provided at all. And as for the social upheaval, there would likely be a shockwave of panic across America resulting in food, gas and clothing shortages, riots and a massive explosion in crime and violence. This event could very much cause the collapse of the United States as we know it today. Now, Dalio does actually try to come up with a solution here, but in reality, he is too scared to tell you the truth about how this problem will actually be fixed because there is only one real path. Dalio states that more structural changes are required alongside one of those temporary quick kick the can down the road type moves as is now in the works should happen. He says that it should be accompanied by a smart bipartisan plan that will take adequate time to be developed in order to make the reforms that are required for us Americans to collectively earn more than we spend and both grow the pie and divide the pie well with sustainable government finances. To produce something that actually works, a smart bipartisan plan, the leaders from both sides, Biden and McCarthy, would have to agree and overcome the obligations and objections of the more extreme members of their parties who either don't want to lift the debt ceiling or aren't willing to compromise on a long-term approach to budgeting that works both economically and socially. Now, what that all really means is that it isn't going to happen because politicians are self-interested and the people who cause this mess surely but won't be the ones to fix them. Bipartisan solutions to bipartisan problem are never going to arrive in American politics because it won't help anyone get elected and it doesn't point the finger at the other side. And the only real way for the American government to fix this problem is to get rid of this massive debt burden and finally return the United States to a government which doesn't print money every year simply to survive, that's to inflate their way out of the issue. When inflation takes place, it makes those with debt wealthier and hurts those who only hold cash. This means fundamentally, inflation is good for the government and bad for the people, but when has the government ever cared about the people? The easiest way to pay off $31 trillion of debt is to print $31 trillion to do it, and in fact, that's probably the only way to pay off that amount of debt. So why should we expect anything else to happen? This process has already started for Pete's sake. The government has been inflaming inflation for years now, all the while pretending to fight it. Biden's Inflation Reduction Act was more about putting money in people's pockets than fighting inflation. In fact, it set about making inflation worse in every sense imaginable. At the end of the day, inflation benefits everyone who has the authority or position to influence inflation, so believing anything except inflation is going to come next is simply put not a very bright idea. We need to keep this in mind and invest into assets that can't be inflated away, like real estate, stocks and shares, and of course art as well. And if you're interested in fine art as an investment, take a look at Masterworks. If you just want to see why BlackRock is on the out, then watch this video here.